pretty exciting. Uh, a lot of things have changed, but I'm happy to be here and uh, I had the opportunity to rest here in Rome, so uh, I'm pretty pumped up for my practices tomorrow. Welcome to Rome. Uh, pl tennis players, probably more so than a lot of professional athletes, have to adjust constantly to everything, all the time, every day. Um, here, it looks like there's a bit of rain in the forecast uh, over the next couple of weeks. How have you come to learn how to adjust as a tennis player and, and kind of incorporate that? And were you more stubborn in, in the past? You know what I mean? Like, what's the journey there for you? Well, for sure, since I started working with Thomas, um, it got a little bit better because it's just, you know, the process is faster because he knows uh, what we should avoid or what we should do before the tournament to make it easier. Um, and. Um, for sure, you know, in Madrid, for example, stringing was a key. Uh, I remember in 2021, I it took me like four days to figure it out, and this year it was one day. So, um, small things like that. Here, I would say, it's easier from Madrid to Rome. The same way it's easier from Indian Wells to Miami, in my opinion, because um, both of these tournaments, the second tournaments are slower, um, and um, and more humid sometimes, and obviously we don't have altitude here, so for me, these clay courts are a little bit more normal. Um, so um, so I think, you know, the rain may be a problem in terms of the logistics and just, you know, making, um, waiting for matches and making it all happen, but, um, but I don't know how it's gonna be, and we'll see. I mean, is it really that bad? We'll see, let's not speculate. You mentioned the changes that were made at this tournament, and some of them we can see, but I imagine there might be some things that we can't see. I was just wondering, what are the changes? Well, I came here like 13 minutes ago, <laughs> so I just picked up my accreditation, and that's, and well, I would get lost if I would be alone, for sure. But um, there's more space, I think, next to the, the dining area is moved and there's more space. There's second gym, which is great because there, there was, I think, always lack of space in terms of, you know, having opportunity to do workouts. Um, we don't use that space around the, where the practice courts are anymore, I think. Right? Yeah? Where the Where the dining was before. Oh, no. Yeah, um, there's this nice um, bridge in between the stadium and the dining area, which is great. Um, and I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> if you see me lost like Katy Perry last week, then please save me. Hi, Iga. Uh, two wonderful titles here, two, two years in a row, and uh, only a few games for your competitors in the finals. What you can do better this year? Well, Difficult. Honestly, well, I think the whole tour is moving forward and kind of playing better and better every year. So uh, you need to catch up and also like be on that path of moving forward and improving. Um, and you know it's it's tough it's always tough you know it doesn't matter you know how the finals look like but it with us it was pretty tight anyway because um i remember it was really physical and every point mattered um and 2021 i almost lost against barbora in quarterfinals i think so um so you know for sure, I have good memories from here, but uh, I'm not expecting this tournament to be <laughs> to be easier than any other because it's it's tough and um, yeah, and there's we'll see how I'm gonna play. I mean, there's always some room for improvement, but we'll see. Sometimes um, you know, just being consistent is enough. Sometimes you need to play on really you know 100% and perfect matches. We'll see. It also depends how my opponents play. Hello, uh, welcome back, first of all. Thank you. Uh, I'm wondering, I mean, uh, for uh, women, uh, the only difference uh, between now two weeks uh, WTA 1000 and slams is just that you have the buy in the first round because then you are still playing in the best of third set. So I'm wondering, like, in the approach of the weekend during the tournament. I didn't understand. Just talking about how the only difference between here and a grand slam is that you have a buy. Now that it's two weeks. 
you are still playing two weeks yeah. and always match up the best of three sets. The only difference with a slam here is that you have the buy at the first round. Well, I would say there are more differences. Yeah, no, so I'm wondering what is the difference for you in the approach oh. and how you're living the, this week? Well, on Grand Slam you feel this totally different vibe of just being on the most important tournament, you know? Even when we say that we're, you know, treating every tournament the same way, which I'm trying to do, for example, then for sure on, on a Grand Slam I feel a little bit different and um, here um, for sure, I have like breaks in between matches, but if I'm on, in the half of the draw that starts later, still I have to play twice, two matches in a row. So um, it is a little bit more intense. Um, I would say there are a lot of differences, but but honestly, I don't see the point of like comparing these tournaments um, to each other. Totally different space, like different atmosphere, different people on the audience different like facilities so okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> I didn't know if you want me to like there you go I might want to ask about long injury layoffs in 2017 you missed eight months because of your ankle so um, I was wondering what the m main challenges were of coming back in terms of trusting your ankle um, and also being mentally back in the game and finding your form again. Oh, well, at that point of my life, basically the problem was that I thought I'm not going to like play tennis anymore because I was a teenager and it was a big thing and already after surgery. So um, I wouldn't say like I dealt with like a normal issues that an injured player has in their you know, pro career, it was more like just not being sure if I'm going to be able to come back. Um, if I'm still, you know, because it's not like I always knew that I'm going to be a tennis player. I feel like every year I needed to kind of prove myself that I'm going into the right direction. And um, I still didn't believe that I'm going to be a pro, you know, until I actually came to WTA and won some matches. Um, and, you know, also there was like the issue of um, if we're going to have also money, you know, to continue and start like a little bit, you know, from the beginning, because this is something that suddenly um, may like change your life path, you know. So I'm pretty happy that uh, we managed, me and my dad, um, to to make me come back. And he also uh, found resources to for me to be able to train and have, you know, practices and find coaches. So, yeah, different different stories than usually here on tour because I was much younger, you know. Okay. Yeah. Another question for you, Iga. When you arrive here last year, uh, you are in a long winning streak and uh, this year you are number one as, as last year. But uh, good rivalry so against Ribakina or Sabalenka, some matches uh, win, some matches lost. In your mind, is better last year or this year for you? It has some advantages, and and also you know my last year's position position also has some disadvantages, as like being a defending champion for the first time and having that streak that I carried on my shoulders a little bit. So I can't compare really. They're both good situations because <laughs> I'm in a good place and I'm, I'm playing good. So, uh, so yeah, like both of these seasons are great. Can't compare. Have you finished the book? The Leonardo Da Vinci book? Leonardo's biography? The, yeah. Not yet. The Da Vinci one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Not yet. No, 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 like, no. It's long. <laughs> I need, no, I mean, I, I, like, I'm at, like, 70%, so I think after this tournament I'll be done. I'm also watching Madame Secretary, so that's why. All right, we'll do, we'll do one more. Uh, so we don't know how much you like reading books, but have you ever thought about um, writing your own book? autobiography or maybe even fiction? Um, wait, what was the last part? I should write fiction? Oh, that I should write fiction? 
I don't have imagination for that and creativity. But um, I don't know, maybe in the in the future. But uh, honestly, like we got many propositions in Poland uh, to write a book, uh, but I I feel like it's totally. Um, too early, and I haven't lived enough to write a book, so um, maybe in a few years. <laughs>